very excited to hopefully have a new majority leader in the Senate. That's what we're working on. And if we have one, uh, Senator John McKinney, uh, he will be somebody who has common sense. He's part of the common sense commitment. He and his team helped form that commitment. And these are the values that helped us earn two seats in the Senate, which basically set the tone to ensure that they had no longer had veto-proof majority in the Senate. And now we're working really hard as a team to earn five more seats so we can take back the Senate and make a difference. So uh, Senator McKinney is one of the leaders in Hartford, and we're really blessed to have him. And thanks for your leadership. And I'm excited to be part of your team. Thank you, and I apologize. Uh, we're running around to a number of different events. First, thank you all for being here and supporting Chris. Uh, what a tremendous opportunity we have, uh, not just to pick up the 19th district. Um, and, and if you think about the difference between Edith Craig and Chris Kutu, um, and, uh, you know, in the last week and a half, I've been to New Britain, I've been to Enfield, I was in Coventry on Saturday, sort of crisscrossing the state. Uh, uh, giving everyone my basic pitch that our favorite number needs to be five. Five votes, five Republican state senators would have been the difference in the largest tax increase in our history. Yep. It would have been the difference between wasting half a billion dollars on a useless busway that nobody needs. It would have been the difference in spending $300 million. They're breaking ground today on what they call Bioscience Connecticut. $300 million for 300 jobs 10 years from now. Uh, it would have been the difference between letting violent criminals out of jail early. Uh, it would have been the difference between forcing personal care attendants, daycare workers to be parts of a union. Um, and the list sadly goes on and on. Now there's a little bit of good news. Uh, when I was in Coventry yesterday, I sat next to Gary LeBeau, who's a state senator from East Hartford, who's got a young guy running against him, and Gary's scared. All right. And he said, and he said to me, we're scared. Uh, because finally, uh, you know, for better or for worse, uh, since Bill O'Neill was governor, the Democrats have no one to blame but themselves. Uh, they can't blame Jody Rell or John Rowland, uh, even though they've been passing budgets in control of the agenda for 38 out of the last uh, 40 years. Uh, and they're scared of Chris Kutu. Uh, they're already counting that as one of the seats they've lost because this seat is perfectly made uh, for Chris, who's hardworking, as hardworking as any candidate I've ever seen. Tomorrow we're going to go in a special session. Uh, today I got two bills. Uh, one is 409 pages and growing. Uh, the other is 191 pages and growing. In effect, every single bill that Governor Malloy wanted, that the Democrats want, that they couldn't get during our regular session, they're stuffing into two different bills most members won't get it till they show up tomorrow. None of you will ever see it until it's long passed and signed into law. Uh, and what I've said is that is not the right way to run a railroad. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, and there's more people who aren't affiliated with any party in our state because they're sick of what goes on with the partisanship. When you pass budgets, when you pass bond bills, when you pass education bills, uh, those bills should be finalized, they should be made public, and you shouldn't vote on them for 48 to 72 hours. do that in the majority. Uh, we will not act in retribution for what they've done to us and drop bills on their desk. We will act as we know the people want us to act. Uh, and we will finally have a counterbalance to Governor Malloy. And we will have a Republican majority that will stand up and say, you know what? We're not going to bring a budget out on the floor of the Senate. And we're not going to pass a budget in Connecticut that spends one penny more uh, than we have to spend because we continue to do that. His shared sacrifice of higher taxes uh, with more spending and, and no concessions of any significant note uh, has not worked. We still have a budget deficit. We still have over $70 billion of unfunded liabilities, which other states around the country are dealing with, and we are not. So that's what the message is. That's why we need your support. That's why we're excited uh, to have Chris. Uh, and I know Chris set his sights on Washington. Uh, but, you know, what we do here in Connecticut is actually a lot more important 
So thanks to Chris for jumping in. Thanks to Steve Everett uh, for being a gentleman. And thanks for all of the Republicans coming together uh, so we can take over the seat. And most importantly, uh, hopefully you'll get to see me a lot between now and November. Uh, but on a personal level, uh, as the Senate Minority Leader who wants to be the Senate President, thank you for all your support. <laughs>